There are many instances when you're creating software where you want your users to be able to create a thing and then add things within that thing. In other words, add a category or a group and then add things inside of that group. Now, there may be many other names that you use for this group or category. You might call it a playlist, a bucket, a folder or a project, but really the functionality is the same. You let your users add a thing and then things inside of that thing. But when you're new to Glide, that can be a little bit tricky to create because it pulls together a number of concepts. So we're going to go over this in this video and you can apply it to virtually every project that you create. We're going to go over row IDs, forms, special values, and column values. So if you're not clear on those concepts in isolation, I would suggest going and checking them out first in our docs at glideapps.com slash learn. Let's get into it. So we're going to cover this with a really simple abstract app that doesn't really it's not a real use case. We're kind of adding a fake group and then adding a fake thing inside of those fake groups, just so that you can get the bare concept. And then we'll look at this in context in real use cases. So what I have here is a very, very simple app with just a form container here, which allows us to add groups. And the groups are really, really simple. Let's go over to the table, to the groups table. And you can see that when we add a group, it's just got a name, a description, a date created, an image, and who it was created by. So let's go back and let's add group three and let's add a description for the group. This is the third group. Now, before I submit this, I'm gonna click on the form container and we're gonna look at what's being passed through. So obviously we're passing through the name, which is what we've put in as the user, the description, which is the description, and then we've got these additional columns, which are populating with special values, the created column and the created by column. And this is one of the principles when you're allowing users to create categories or groups or buckets that you want to be able to allow them to add the properties of the item themselves, but also maybe pass in a few things that help you understand what happened with that thing earlier. For example, if someone's creating a project, you might want to say in the future, this project is nine days old, or this project owner is so-and-so. So those are the things that you might want to think about. So we're going to submit this and you can see we've now got in this collection here, group three. Now this is really simple functionality. We've just got a form container adding new rows to a table. And then we add a collection underneath, which is just reading that table. And all we're doing is presenting the data, but this is just the first level. The next level is where we want to go inside of that group and then add things inside of that group. So let's go into group one and see what's there. Well, there's nothing there at the moment. It's just a title. So what we want to be able to do is add another form inside of this group and allow people to add things inside of it. But how does that work in terms of the data? So let's go to the data editor. You can see here that we've got the table for groups, but we also need another table for things. And again, these are very abstract names. You may be changing these to projects and tasks or playlists and songs or locations and employees. It doesn't really matter. They're just groups and things. So let's go to the things table and you can see that we've just got some empty properties here, name, description, date, and owner, and there's no rows there. So let's go back to the layout editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new form container and you can do this with forms. You can do this with add screens and edit screens and custom actions, lots of different stuff. So I'm just going to keep this really simple. I'm going to send this to the things table and we are going to get rid of this title here and we're going to get rid of the date and the owner. And this is what I was talking about earlier is that you want the users to be able to pass in values that they decide, but then also special values and column values. So you as the creator of this software can do more things with the things that they've added, if that makes sense. So we want to pass through a couple of things. We want to be able to pass through the date that it was added and we've already kind of seen this and the owner, which is the current user's email address. So let's do this and see what we're left with. So I'm going to say thing one, and I'm going to say this thing is in group one, submit. Okay. Well that's sent now. So let's go over to the data editor and we can see that we've got it, but we've got no way of linking those together and we can't really display them. Well, we can, let me show you something. If I add a collection now and I show all things, 
we're going to see thing one. But if we go and let's change the description here, okay, and let's go to second group, and we see that thing one, which is supposed to be in group one, is actually in group two as well. And in fact, anything that we add is going to appear. So if I add uh, thing two, this should be in group two. This is going to appear in group two, but it's also going to appear in all of the other groups. So we need something to prevent this. And what we need next is a relation. Now, before going through with this, you should definitely have a look at relations on our library and get a full explanation of how they work. So let's go to the data editor and kind of describe how this is going to work. In groups, let's imagine we're inside of group one like we were and we add in an item and we that item went to things and it was thing one. This thing one is in group one. There's nothing now in this thing that will allow us to link back to groups. For example, if I create a relation, which is supposed to link things together, I'm going to try and link maybe the name, so group one, to match the value in... There's nothing here that I can match with. There's no group one column or column where group one exists. So really what we need is at the time of creating the item, the thing, we need to pass in what group it's in so that we can use that later to link them together. So this is where a new column comes in. So I'm going to go to the things table and I'm going to create a new column. And this is just going to be a basic column and it's going to say group. So at the time of creating it, it, this didn't get passed in. So let's go back to that form container and we can see now we've got an additional column which Glide knows is currently not being added to by the form or by the additional columns. So what we can do is we can pass in the name of the current group that we're in. We're in group one, Glide knows this, we can see it here, and we can pass that in. Okay, so let's add another thing. And again, these might seem a little abstract, things and groups, but just imagine the app or website that you need to build and apply those names to the groups and the things. I'm leaving it deliberately abstract so that you can kind of think of your own use cases. So thing three, this, should be in the, uh, group one. Slightly confusing with three and one, but I'm sure you're handling it. Okay, cool. So we've now got all of these items here. Let's go to the data editor, to the things table, and we can see now that thing three has the value of the group that it was created within, which is really valuable, okay? These ones don't, but let's pretend that they do, or did rather. So I'm gonna add a uh, group two, and I'm going to add group one, okay? So we haven't actually got anything in group three yet, but we've got two items that should be in group one and one item that should be in group two. So now that we have these unique values, we can create a relation from the groups table. So I'm going to go to the groups table, I'm going to create a new relation column, and that column is going to be called things. And it's going to be a match multiple because we want to bring multiple things back. And we're going to relate to items where the value in name matches the value in that new group column. You can now see that we're bringing back the things that belong there, okay? And if we actually double click on this cell here, we can actually see now the different things that are being brought back. So now let's go back to the layout editor and our collection on each group is currently just showing us all things. Right, we're reading from the things table here. But we now have a new source here, which is the relation that we just created. And when we do that, we'll get only the things that belong in that group, okay? So let's go to another group. Let's go back and let's go to group two. And we'll see only things that belong in group two. And if we add an item, so this is gonna be thing four, and it's gonna say this should belong in group two, submit we've got the right thing working now. So that's really good. So this is very abstract data. So let's move to data that's more understandable now, like projects and tasks. So let's imagine you're creating a projects and tasks app. Instead of groups, you'd have projects. Instead of things, you'd have tasks. And for example, you'd have this project would have multiple tasks within it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward and change all the data to make it make sense with that new use case.
So I've totally changed the app now in terms of the dummy data, but the actual structure of the app and the data itself is exactly the same. If we go over to the data editor, we can see that we have projects now and tasks within projects. Okay, so if we look at this project here, we can see that we have a couple of tasks. And in this project here, we have a couple of tasks. So let's have a look at the app here. We can add projects. When we add projects, we can go inside of them. We can see tasks and we can add tasks inside of them. So that's perhaps more of a real world use, well, definitely more of a real world use case for this. But I wanted to show you an issue that can come up and then what you can do to mitigate that issue. So if I go back to the project screen, we've only got three projects here. So it's very unlikely for us to have any issues with it. But say this app or this website became much bigger and the database became much larger. It's very, very conceivable that someone could create a new project called new website designs or group first aid training, you know, they do that again next year. And then when that happens, if they create it with exactly the same name, any tasks that get added to that project will be added in both of them. Let me show you what I mean. So if I add a project called new website designs, and we don't need a description. So we see that down here, I'm going to add a new item in here and you see that the tasks are already there from the other project. And that's because our relation, if we go to the data editor, is based off of this column. And these two values are exactly the same. So they're getting all of the relation items. So we need to base our relations on something that's a lot more unique. And you'll come across this many, many times in the projects that you create that when you create relations, you need to absolutely be using unique values for the things that you're relating. So often it's very hard to find unique values. So Glide makes this actually really easy with a column called row IDs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the projects table here and I'm going to create a new column and it's going to be a computer column, which is the row ID column. And this row ID column creates very unique values for each row. And they're just gobbledygook to humans, but computers can see that they are completely unique. So what we can start doing now is relating using this value instead. But the problem is with the data that we have already is with these tasks is that they only have the project as a kind of name, right? We need to somehow get the project's unique ID into that table as well. So all we need to do is that when we are submitting items using the form, we can, instead of passing the project, pass the project's row ID over, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete the dummy data that we have and then start again so you can see how this is gonna work. Okay, so I've deleted all of the existing tasks. And so now that we're gonna be wanting to pass in the project's ID, I'm just gonna change the name of this to be project ID instead. So for example, if we're creating a project inside of new website designs, we're gonna create a new project, it's gonna pass through that value, and it's gonna add it to this column here so that we can link it back without any errors. So I'm gonna to go to new website designs, and I'm gonna say book meeting with Tom and submit. Now, the final thing we need to do is go to the projects table. I'm going to change this to be tasks so it's clearer. And I'm going to relate to items where the value in the row ID column, this is our unique value, matches the tasks and projects IDs column. So this is now working well. We can go and start creating more and more tasks. Do this, do that. And now when we go back to projects and we create another project called new website designs, it doesn't matter that it's a completely repeated name. It won't get any of the tasks that belong to the other project. So this is another task, which is new. And when we go back to the other new website designs, that doesn't exist. So that's a basic look at creating things in things, buckets, projects, or whatever you want to call them. Something that needs to be done in basically every single project that you make in Glide. And a more reliable way to link things together using relations.